we must dissolve the artificial boundaries that confine our perceptions. Someone once said, if we could feel what we are doing to the earth, we would stop immediately. Because a man hitting himself on the head with a ball-peen hammer stops immediately. The feedback <laughs> loop is very short. So we have compartmentalized our lives and this allows us to do the fateful and lethal work that is destroying the planet, destroying community, so forth and so on. Uh, so maybe you might search your own soul and ask uh, what obsession or interest of mine would contribute to the grand project of boundary dissolution. Uh, certainly it is not the affirmation of cultural values. Culture is a scheme for maintaining and creating boundaries. It replaces reality with a, a linguistically supported delusion and behind that delusion then pogroms, programs of genocide, arms races, sexism, racism, all can operate very, very comfortably. Uh, Ralph earlier mentioned love. Uh, generally speaking, love is a boundary dissolving enterprise. So I think each of us, the three of us, all of you, in our way, should find ways to express love. And it's not, it's not treacly, it's not woo-woo, it's a very practical matter that has thousands of expressions. As long as we believe in mind and matter, rich and poor, living and dead, aboriginal and advanced, black and white, man and woman, then we're inevitably going to carry on a dualistic analysis of our dilemma and we're going to produce incomplete agendas and answers. <clears throat> And I don't advocate a certain political agenda, not that we must become Marxists or that we must become anything. What we must become is clear. Uh, we have the technologies and the informational structures and all the necessary abilities to create paradise on earth, to lift up the least among us to at least an acceptable uh, level of comfort and freedom. Why do we not do that? Because what stands in our way is our own minds, our own habits. We must change our minds. That's the most powerful political work people in this room could do. And there is nobody who is so enlightened that they don't need to work on themselves and do this. To the degree that we can change our minds, we will escape extinction, marginality, and so forth and so on. And to the degree that we cannot change our minds, we will prolong the agony, perhaps unto death and extinction, perhaps only making the struggle more difficult.